okay the drought in California has been extended another week or so because this low pressure uh, just north of Hawaii was destroyed on April 25th here it is uh, April 25th and let me jump ahead 24 hours later this is what it looks like okay you'll notice that low pressure has absolutely dis disappeared mysteriously and if I go back and we can see there's just a huge amount of uh, vigorous rotation a lot of angular momentum in the atmosphere the question is where does all that go and now 24 hours later this is April 26th 16 Zulu see that low pressure is gone this is the only remnant of it here and we see a harp outflow boundary it's actually being compressed inward by this inrushing air so I think that we have two uh, dry air uh, roll clouds and that's the the remnants of this massive harp uh, downburst that was used to crush that low pressure another thing uh, point I want to make is <clears throat> this ionospheric heater needs that D layer which only forms a couple of hours after daybreak so this right here is at night and nighttime it gets a very vigorous spin because this is uh, 16 Zulu uh, the way the clock works out from 20 Zulu to 04 Zulu is is the daytime hours out here in the Pacific so uh, the US Navy SBX transmitters are off in this location here that's why they had to wait for this low pressure to get this far east before they could attack it but it also has to be uh, during the daytime if we look at jump ahead now here is April 25th 21 to 23 Zulu well it's 19 to 23 Zulu hope you can read that it's up in the fine print up here and we can notice oh, all of a sudden not only is it losing its round shape but the the vigorous rotation is slowing down and uh, what it looks like in the daytime very odd appearance in the daytime look at this it's obviously getting smashed down by something I'll zoom out and you can see that that's visible light that's daytime that's a, the uh, man-made high pressure in the jet stream is blowing this low pressure apart and now I want to show you the um, we'll go back to this first one again and right here this is April 25th 16 Zulu well, well call it it's actually 13 to 16 so we'll just call it 12 because that matches this map the best okay so this is um, the uh, jet stream pressure map and if we go to here's here's the same time as when it has vigorous rotation you can notice the low pressure is 9288 this is a lot of low pressure in the jet stream now we jump ahead 12 hours 24 hours it's gone okay so all that rotation in the jet stream somehow magically disappeared except for this hook right here which shows some high pressure or descending air so I want to sh give you my theory on this and that is this low pressure which is rising air in the jet stream is spinning counterclockwise and we know within 24 hours all that rotation stopped because these isobars the pressure lines disappeared so my theory since this angular momentum is always conserved where did all that spinning air go that's like an atom bomb this amount of energy is like an atom bomb well the only way you can cancel that angular momentum is by pressing air down on top with a man-made high pressure and uh, that would be counterclockwise high pressure is clockwise low pressure is counterclockwise so as you press that air down on top that rotation is canceled which is exactly what we saw and then jumping ahead you can see the low pressure is gone it's just simply gone now if we do the same uh, comparison here at the uh, surface pressure the surface uh, 
sea level pressure. Here's uh, April 25th, 12 Zulu. There is low pressure at the surface, okay? 1009. Jump ahead. 1010. 107. So um, by the time the low pressure in the jet stream was completely gone, this surface low pressure was strengthening. Okay, that's a big deal, I think, because this shows that whatever killed the low pressure in the jet stream did not occur at the surface. Okay, whoops, I'm going the wrong way, sorry. Uh, where am I? Yeah, okay, here we go. So, we, we just saw the surface low pressure was still, it was still deepening by this point, uh, 12 Zulu, April 25th. And by here, the surface pressure, low pressure, is as strong as it ever got. And yet, this column of rising air has suddenly been stopped mysteriously. Um, now, the real tragedy of this, um, let me just show you the current kind of uh, map. Because after they smashed that jets, that uh, low pressure, uh, y your possibility of rain in, in California is gone now. In fact, if we look at this last one here for, uh, what is this, April 28, we can see a ton of chemtrails now. Okay, so they have successfully smashed that low pressure. It's just smeared out. It's gone. And now they are lots of heavy chemtrails and this right hand clockwise movement here is high pressure that guarantees no rain for California for what another week and as bad as that is you can see this this jet of warm humid air being pressed up into the Yukon and Alaska and the temperature in Alaska is outrageously warm uh, sorry, I gotta dig up this map. But it's 55 degrees in central Alaska right now, and I mean that's at 11 o'clock at night. If I can find this map, here it is. Okay, so you know this is uh, this is 11 o'clock at night, and it's 55 degrees in central Alaska. Now this means that this harp operation out there. Drought in California is just a byproduct, just a byproduct. What's really being done is uh, they're melting the Arctic deliberately with this technology. And what I want to say is that this stuff happening, it's happening out in international waters, okay? That means the other nations of the world have a right to uh, to stop this and it is easy to detect 20 million watts of microwave energy so the international navy fleets need to be out there and observing this and stop it that's my suggestion here that the common everyday joe can't do a whole lot but the the nations of the world can get together and stop this and then you folks in California will finally get some rain again. But uh, you can see what would have been a low pressure and carried across this way. Um, basically, <clears throat> the low pressure is still here, but it's now going to manifest itself up here. You know, and one other thing, uh, just, you know, for grins, is this little uh, swirl up here. It sat there for three days. You know, why didn't that one just suddenly uh, uh, blow itself apart, disappear? Uh, and that water up there is 55 degrees. So, you know, this low pressure here sat there stationary while all this drama went on down here. Okay. Well, anyway, you folks in California have to start doing this research. And I recommend that you have two PCs and use a KVM switch to switch between your two PCs. So your second PC is just for storing weather maps. All right, And that only takes a couple minutes a day to store 
to go to these websites and update a new window. And then after you've got a week or 10 days of weather maps, you can go back and do your analysis. But I want you folks in California to start doing this. You, you may notice uh, these maps. Um, I mean, I'm down here in Texas, and I'm just getting uh, wheelbarrow fulls of rain. It's terrific. Uh, in fact, I mean, look at this low pressure. They take your low pressure from California and drive it right over my area. And I really do think it's because uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So you guys in California need to start doing this. Just use a second PC to capture your weather maps. It takes no time to do that. And then you go back and look at them. If there's something remarkable, and tell the world. If not, then just uh, reboot and capture another week of maps. But I want I want a hundred people in California to do this because I'm getting my rain, you know. And frankly, I'm a lot more concerned about the Arctic and the methane, which is now 28, 2,800 parts per billion. This is a death sentence for our planet. We are now going pure vertical on the methane release in the Arctic. And as bad as that sound, it's, sounds, it's a thousand times worse than I can possibly put into words. Alrighty, so thanks for watching.